Today, we're going to be tracking collision events between objects. For instance, this marshmallow with this stick. But actually, in the case of this marshmallow and stick instance, we did it slightly differently. We actually used a trigger object and the stick. And the way it works with triggers is you tag the object stick, and on the trigger, you say objects tagged stick, and then this trigger fires a trigger entered by object event when this stick comes into this trigger. Now this works great because we don't want the marshmallows flying all over the place, it's not nearly as accurate, and so as soon as this stick is stuck into this bowl, we get a marshmallow attached to the end of the stick. Works really well in this case, but there is another instance where you would want to use object colliding with another object because triggers are on a frame rate basis, which means you know, you're getting like however many frames you're having is how often the trigger fires, but object collisions do not care about frame rates and they're going to collide no matter what. For instance, if you shot a marshmallow as fast as you could through this rock, it's going to collide with that rock no matter what. But if you put a really thin trigger there, it's quite possible it could skip the frame in that trigger and never fire the event. So collision events with objects can be very powerful depending on the scenario. And if you'd like to learn how we did these marshmallows, it's an amazing script and I'd love to show you, but make sure to leave a comment so I know you're interested. In today's video, we're going to be taking this ball and we're going to have it hit a backboard and play a sound. It's a very simple trick, but it's the key to learning object collision events with other objects. First thing first, we need to make sure that these two objects are grouped together because this ball and this audio effect are in essence connected. Wherever this ball is, this audio effect needs to be. To group the objects together, simply click and drag through both objects. Sometimes you'll need to select one object and then click and drag through the other object. And once you have both objects selected, put your hand inside, press joystick to the left, and that will group your two objects together. We're then going to stick our hand inside, press forward on the joystick to open up the properties panel. We can then turn snapping off and enlarge our properties panel so it's easier to see. Once we've enlarged our properties panel, we're going to go ahead and make this interactive. We do want to add physics so that way it can be thrown around, and we want to give this a bouncy rubber ball-like attribute. So now that we've selected rubber ball, we have gravity on, it is grabbable because we've selected both physics and gravity, we now need to go to our more tab, and under more, you're going to find collision events from says nothing. We want to get collision events not from players, but objects tagged. And in this case, we're gonna call this objects tagged wood. And so basically we can have wooden backboards or anything that we add the tag wood to, we're gonna get this sound playing on. So now that we have this set up, we're gonna create a backboard. I've gone ahead and created this really simple basketball hoop and we can check to make sure the ball goes in by letting go of the ball. And as we can see, this is just not a big enough hoop. So let's go ahead and scale this proportionate. So we'll go ahead and grab and scale using our snap tool to keep it level. And then we'll grab our ball again and turn off snapping and then let go. And if you're not familiar with snapping, it's on your left hand by pulling the joystick down, you can turn it off and on. All right, so now that we have a ball and this hoop is definitely big enough to go in, what we wanna do is object tag wood. So this backboard, we want to go into the attributes tab and under the tag section of the attributes tab for this wooden backboard, we're just gonna add the tag wood. What this now means is whenever this object collides with this backboard, it's going to send off an event. And we can capture that event in a script. And I'll show you how we do that in just a second. But first, let's go position this all where we want it in the world. Ooh, look at that, with my basketball hoop in position, it was really easy to get it in. And I'm not gonna say that was easy because I don't think I can pull it off again. <laughs> While it was relatively easy for me to get that time, I think it might be a little too difficult, so I am gonna move it just down slightly. There we go, I think that'll be a little bit easier for people to use. The next step is to create a script. So you're gonna to go to your build settings, go down to gizmos and pull out a script gizmo. We're gonna go ahead and call this script basketball sound effects. And the reason we're gonna do this is because in this world, I've written a script called return. And my return script goes on all of my grabbable objects. And so because of that, we're actually gonna run this not on the basketball itself, but on the sound effects. And that might sound bonkers, but if we come over here to our events tab, we can get when world is started. And if we scroll down to the bottom of the events tab, you'll see listen to events. And so now instead of running on the basketball, we can get all of the events happening on the basketball by using this listen to events. The trick to this is you have to go to your variables tab, create new object variable, and we'll call this b-ball. 
And now that we have an object bball variable, we can now plug that in and at the beginning of the world we'll start receiving all events related to this basketball in the script basketball sound effects. Now it is important to note that a script needs to run on an object, so we will need to go and attach this script to the sound effect, but we'll get to that soon. Now that we know this event is running on the sound effect, the next thing we need to do is go to our events tab and the event that's going to happen is when colliding with object because remember we've turned on collision events on that basketball. So when collision enter with object is received from the basketball that we started listening to, what we want to do is go to our actions tab, scroll down one time and you're going to see stop sound and play sound. So this is going to allow us to stop the sound on self and then play the sound on self. The reason we put stop sound before play sound is because of a bug in Horizon right now which doesn't always stop the sound before playing, meaning your sound effect doesn't always go off. This just ensures that the sound always plays. Please note that in build mode, sounds are much less likely to play accurately and they usually work much better when you publish the world. This is it! Our script is done! When world is started, we listen to the basketball and then when the collision enters with the basketball and the backboard, we're going to play the sound effect and since this is running on the sound effect, that means self. If you were to run this on the basketball instead, you'd go to your variables tab and create a new variable sound effect and that sound effect variable is what you'd put into the self slot so you can either pull this out and delete it and drag and drop or you can drag and drop onto it. You can also use the undo button in your script to undo any changes that you might have made a mistake, so like that one there. With the script done, we need to open up the properties panel for our sound effects. To do that, we need to go zoom into our object using this arrow button on the grouping and now that we're inside of the grouping, we can adjust and build from inside the group. As you can see here, we now have the sound effects properties panel. Please note that if you have an object selected and you exit the grouping, the object will be removed from the group. The opposite is also true. If you need to move your sound effect into the grouping, you can do the same thing. Now that we've left the grouping, we can attach the script. So if we go down here, we're going to attach the basketball sound effects. And then we need to grab this reference cable and connect it to the right reference cable for our basketball grouping. Now we are connected to the basketball object on our sound effect, which is running the script basketball sound effects. So now when we come in here and we grab our basketball and we throw it up and hit the board, there it is. We got a really nice sound. And now we can try this out a couple times. Oh, nice. See, that works, works remarkably well. With this script, you now have the basics for object to object collisions and there is endless possibilities. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!